to see an oncologist and just get a scan to make sure because yeah. I've already been to three doctors and so far all three of those we're live we're live <laughs> <laughs> we're live we're live y'all <laughs> so now do y'all have a medical report I'm catching Paul up on everything we're live <laughs> yeah I'm catching up I yeah, was behind the yeah times. we're behind times but today I have been transferred y'all from Kennestone Hospital Care to Northside in Cherokee which is so much better so a better drive not so bad. Hopefully today when we take this bandage off, we get some improvement. I'm ready for improvement. I pray so. I'm ready to be done with this stuff. So if you are out and about in the sun, wear sunscreen. If you are prone to skin cancers that turn into a melanoma that will take your life, be cautious, be aware you skied all your life. Have you checked your body for spots? I go every year to the dermatologist. How important is that? It is. Very, very important. I was in the sun, no sunscreen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I, that's one thing yeah. I stay on top of. Yep. Yeah. I know a gentleman younger than you who had one spot in the middle of his back, and he is with Jesus today. Mm. So, and melanoma is one of those things. So, mm -hmm. y'all be cautious and I know you love the sun I see all, all my friends are tan and beautiful and Leah Logan happy birthday to you you tan and beautiful thing <laughs> but you know it's not worth it and and with my pale skin I've never had a tan I lived in Florida and hated those beach girl bunnies who could run around <laughs> with their copper tone and all brown and after an hour I'm blood red yeah. and then I peel you know and I think my complexion is the perfect skin to attract skin cancer. And melanoma happens to be that nasty boy that will kill you. And I just refuse for that to happen to me. It's not, it's not gonna happen. And y'all keep praying. Today, pray that when they take off the bandage, some of the infection is gone. That would be awesome. That would that be would good. Be that would be a good day. That would be a good day. I'd like to see a good day because i got to go to the grocery store in a little while and it won't be a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, how does a family with children, with grandchildren, with elderly parents who have to eat well, how, how do they buy groceries today? It's a struggle. I mean, they're having to make decisions as to... It's crazy. What am I going to do? What am I going to sacrifice mm -hmm. to be able to, to buy groceries? Family? Yeah. Uh, for their family, their housing, their, you know, unfortunately, we're seeing a situation where all of this reckless government spending and printing of money in reckless. the past. Reckless. Absolutely reckless. Reckless. And anybody who agrees with that plan that they're trying to shove down our throats, shame, 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 shame. Yeah, well. It's a classic example. I've been telling people for years, if you pay attention to what the parties are doing, the Republicans talk out of the right side of their mouth and the Democrats talk out of the left side of their mouth, but they're all headed in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you can see that in the bills that are going through and, and just the lack of honesty. I mean, mm -hmm. I, from when I, I cannot remember the name, was it the Fiscal Responsibility Act? Yeah, what I mean, a joke. Fiscal Responsibility. What a joke. Fiscal responsibility is what I do, so so I'll volunteer my time uh, from time to time for people to come in, cl uh, clients of kids or, you know, just people that will call in and say, hey, look, we're in a financial bind. Mm -hmm. Can you help us? Mm -hmm. And, you know, so they'll bring in a budget. I'll sit down. I'll go through the budget, and I'll say, is this absolutely necessary? Can you cut this out here? Can mm -hmm. you cut that out there? Mm -hmm. And people will make these cutbacks, right? Maybe I'm not going to do Starbucks two times a day. Maybe I'm going to start taking my lunch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even myself, I go get a biscuit this morning, <coughs> and the price has gone from, you know, $2.89. $2 $2 $2 I was going to say 2 dollars That was my favorite biscuit. We're not going to disclose the name of the place, but we will say it was one of my favorites. <laughs> right. Two, two, when it was two eighty nine, it was my favorite. Yeah, two eighty nine, <laughs> yeah. And then it went to three forty or three fifty, and I was like, well... And then it went to 380, you know, and this is once a week I usually treat myself to that because mm -hmm. I always cook my own breakfast and, mm -hmm. and bring it in. And then today it was, you know, up there well over, you know, mid $4 and 50 something cents. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, my yeah. behavior is going to change today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but the problem is, you know, the government just continues to print and print and print. Um, and, and and that's wearing on the largest majority of Americans. And you've got a situation now where 
the barrier to entry in business because corporations, rightfully so, this is the game that 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 they should play, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know that they should play, but they're going to play. Is try to game the system. If you've got the revenue to, you know, contribute to a, a, a legislator, a politician's campaign for the benefit of, hey, you know, this is not a big deal, but raise the barrier to entry here or put this regulation in place that mm -hmm. raises the burden on the average small business. And what, what it does by default is monopolize industries, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Walmart model comes in. They're held hostage. The, the Home Depot model comes in. The Lowe's model comes in. And, yeah, they, they've been great in, in investments over the years. But what we see that they do into a community is they crowd out the small businesses. So mm -hmm. your option is, you know, you want to go try to uh, uh, open a lumber supply, you've got to have massive amounts of money. And uh, most small banks can't loan on that unless you mm -hmm. get access to Wall Street. So the system is set up for the top five, ten percent. Now, don't get me wrong, that's the people that I deal with mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But it's set up for that, but it's destroying... Uh, the middle class, mm -hmm. and and it's disheartening everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it, it's heartbreaking. Something has to change and something has to break. I don't know how much longer we're going to go before something breaks, but something is going to break. you remember 2008? I do, clearly. Well, is it true that the banks that have now defaulted have defaulted on more money than 2008? I think technically we've had the second and third largest Mm -hmm. bank failures that we've seen in history. In history. And, in history. Uh, and, and we allowed that to happen after everything was taken from so many people. I could give you a list this high of people I know who lost everything in 2008 mm -hmm. through 2010. I can give you a list, names, places, show you the properties they lost, show you how they had to start over at 60 years or older. We are headed, if we don't stop this madness, we are headed down a sad, sad road. And it may not be a, a, a major collapse like occurred in 2008. It just may be a slow grind lower. The one thing I will say in studying history is inflation, inflation is the cruelest tax mm -hmm. that a government can place on its citizens. I mean, you think about conversations you were having with people that are having to make decisions on how to feed their family, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a cruel tax. Mm -hmm. Um, because the government can can print and spend for their agendas mm -hmm. to try to make themselves look good so that they can get votes, bring all these people in from overseas. Let's let's give you all kinds of funds and benefits and it's and lying, cheating, services. and stealing. That's all it amounts I mean, it to. Is. It's lying, cheating, and stealing. They convince you to do this, and you jump in. And then they show their true colors, and then we fail. Right. And that is lying, cheating, and stealing. You can't do that without being handcuffed and put in the back of a police car. But unfortunately, there's there's no fear of God. There's no there's no media that will call out individuals for their lying and deception. What's that guy's name? The uh, financial guy, Larry. Is it Larry Ludlow? Larry Cudlow. Cudlow. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like him. I, like I haven't him. watched Larry in a he's, while. He's kind of my kind of guy. I like he's him. He's a straight and he, shooter. He, he tells it like it is. He's a straight shooter. He could have been my daddy. He's like, <laughs> he's like straight up. And I was watching him the other night, and I thought, they're going to kick you off TV because you're telling the truth. And he was telling the truth. <laughs> right. And I thought, he's going to get in trouble because he's telling the truth. How sad is that, that we have these lying, cheating, stealing people doing all the things they're doing to us in the name of our government, and then we have a gentleman like him who is telling the truth. And, I mean, he was he was nailing it. And I'm right. like, I wish I could have picked up the phone and called him. But it's scary, Paul, because because there's accountability. Um, First-time home buyers, I used to deal with a lot of those. And I was dealing with a lot of those who were approved for 300000 Now they're approved for two twenty five because the interest spiked. Okay, the interest spiked. And y'all go shopping today and tell me what you can buy a home for 225000 You're going to get a fixer-upper. You're going to get a flip. You're going to get one to tear down and to rebuild. You're not going to get much for less than one to two twenty five. And then you got to spend 100000 on it. All these people that w I've worked, some of them for two years, mm -hmm. trying to find them their first time. We have shown and shown and shown and shown. 
and then they come back to me and their list has changed completely because we went from a three hundred thousand dollar budget to a two twenty five. Right. Are you seeing things like that happen? Yes. Yes. And you can, you know, and what and you gonna do about what, it? What two hundred twenty five thousand dollar home is out there right now? Not much of nothing. This, it, it's not. Not much of nothing. I can show you two really, really nice double wides on Grandview today for three hundred nine thousand each, <laughs> and they're beautiful. They're beautiful. But again, we're going to what can you afford? What can the first right. time buyer afford? Well, they can't afford 309 at today's interest rates. Right. Because they're buying in with no cash down and they're qualifying for a first time buyer with a USDA loan. They're getting all the perks, but they can't make their payment because their payment would be about $2,023 a, a month, yeah. I believe, for a double wide trailer. So it's changing the way we're looking at things. Well, and you got to think it's a slow creep. You know, local governments institute restrictions on mobile homes coming in. Mm -hmm. Local government. Boy, that's a big deal. And if you've got a piece of land where you can put one, yeah. people are looking. They're looking. And but but you know, finding finding the land and clearing the regulations and even the the expense. You know, a the, well. The, the cost. Because most of them don't have water. Right. Most of them you have to drill right. a well. And then we, we have not focused on affordable housing. Mm -mm. And, and the problem with this is, is it seems in America today our attention is so short that unless we experience immediate pain right now, mm -hmm. nothing gets done. Because no one's taking the time to think, okay, you know, like the Bible tells you, ponder the path of your feet. Mm -hmm. So, okay, where are we going to be, right? So if we don't change something now, what's going to happen? People move here because they want to retire here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't pay taxes in the local school system. They've mm -hmm. moved in here. Mm -hmm. So you have younger families that are going to carry the burden, but yet they've inherited a nation that spent us into oblivion. Mm -hmm. So we're the, the, the burden of the sins of the fathers are being put down upon the children. And, you know, not everybody in that generation has done wrong, but they've stood by idly and allowed this situation to occur so, you know, what are, you, what are we going to do 10 years from now if we don't have a service class? You're not going to have anybody that's going to be able to serve you at the restaurants. And I know this is an extreme statement, but if we don't do something... Today, they're closing at 3 o'clock. A lot of the, our local, I mean, well, Mike's closes yeah, at 2 because they can't help. get any help. That's right. Bojangles in Canton closes at 3 because they can't right. get help. Are you kidding me? You can't find somebody to work? And this is a symptom, okay, of where we're going. Mm -hmm. So... If we don't have something break, you know, if the government gets their way, they're going to inflate the debt away. They'll go, okay, well, let's just expand the debt at 5% a year, but let's let inflation run at 10% a year. And those that are able to leverage that debt and can cash flow that in the short run are going to end up with all the assets. And the middle class is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And we're going to have a, a, a bipolar economy, basically, where 90% are in the lower class and the top 10% are there and and even those in the uh, 80 percent to 90 are just clawing tooth and nail so when you look at the statistics in our our nation um depression suicide mm -hmm. you know that our, our government is not doing a good job for the people on either side of the aisle mm -hmm. you know there are some that are trying to stand up to for this. my first time ever since being a voter i'm going what right what you know, what am I going to do? Who am I going to back? How am I going to support? What am I going to do? How can we get somebody in there that can make a difference? What are we going to do? And, and on uh, Gutfeld, uh, Kat is a, uh, what does she call herself? An independent. Mm -hmm. And she always votes independent. <laughs> Who are going to vote for independently? <laughs> Who are we going to vote for? We don't know. But you know how close it is to an election? Very close. Usually the year before the election, the guy who's made the mess is trying to clean up the mess because he's trying to bring you dumb enough to dumb you down mm -hmm. <laughs> to vote for him again and so they're not even doing that they assume that they're going to be dumb enough to vote again for the party that's taken us to these trillion dollar debts and and i don't know who to vote for maybe maybe there's an independent out there that's going to announce maybe there's i don't know who's gonna i don't know i don't, I don't know, know. i hope so you know I, I i wish that we had you know and you hear the democratic party doesn't want to allow uh kennedy 
to mm -hmm. debate Biden. Mm -hmm. That's that. Of course he doesn't want him to because Robert Kennedy has a voice condition that, bless his heart, he can barely speak. But I would much rather listen to Robert Kennedy four days a week, 24 hours a day, than to hear Biden open his mouth. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And if you're my you friends and, my you, TV, and, you, and you stand for him, I'm sorry. But Robert Kennedy, I'm a Republican. I would have voted for Jack Kennedy. Well, I, I would have voted for Robert Kennedy, we, and I'm a Republican for goodness sake. <laughs> we need we need something different, but I mean it's it, it's nearly impossible to just the the amount of energy that it takes to fight the the major yeah. media centers. Yeah. But what we need is a debate. Put them up before. What what I wish we would do. Okay. Biden can't debate. He can't even find his socks. How could he debate? But the American people should demand more than that. Exactly. Okay? But they're not going to. They're going to sit at home and scratch and pick and go vote. And it just drives me crazy. But I, I was talking with with my son-in-law the other day. We were we were d discussing a couple things, and I said what we really need to do is get all the experts on TV in front of the American people. And have a debate, right? Not mm -hmm. a controlled debate, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where I'm going to get you, just let people have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Because if you control the questions, right, then you basically control the answers. But if you get up there and have a conversation where people can, can debate, you're really going to find out. Oh, yeah. How smart they are, how yeah. good they are in yeah. debating. And yeah. we're in a global, we're in a yeah. global situation right now where the dollar's been weaponized, I think foolishly. Um, which puts at risk our position as a global reserve currency. Okay. Did you by chance see my friend from Germany who was here last week and who was on the show? No, she, I didn't. She is such a strong Christian, devout Christian, and, and works in Germany as a nurse in a psychiatric ward. And um, she's been every kind of nurse in the world. But she, she said that Germany is failing so quickly because they are allowing someone over here that's in the White House to tell them what to do, and that Germany is just failing, failing, failing. The most industrialized country in the world is failing. I haven't been keeping up with Germany. Well, so. and, and she's here as a, an evangelist trying to tell people in America, wake up before you become Germany. Wake up before they try to shove the green stuff down your throat, before they try to shove stuff down your throat that your fifth generation family can't stay in their home because it's not green safe, da 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 da, like that AOC wants all that stuff. You know, a, a debate, if AOC had ever debated anybody, she wouldn't have been elected as county dog catcher. <laughs> I mean, come on. Debates are so important. D debates so important. Are, How does a president get to be elected and won't debate? Right, right. Well, the power centers that are around have so much control that they can, that they can drive them there. Are we that stupid? <sighs> Unfortunately, yeah. I think so. That foolish as a nation is what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't believe that people desire wisdom anymore. There is no fear of God. And whether you believe in God or not, okay, you look at the principles that are taught in the Bible, that, you know, you follow those principles, justice, right? Justice for all. Justice is supposed to be blind and mute and deaf. You hear the weight of the evidence regardless of the person. You're not supposed to cater to somebody just because they have money. Right, right. But we're in a situation in this country where we worship people just because they have money, and we don't really look at the heart and the character of the individual that's there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so without that fear of God, in addition, the government's been able to abuse our position as global reserve currency and print massive amounts of money to paper over our problems. And I'll tell you one thing that I've seen in watching families over the years I mean, that's one of the most unique things that I get to do is I'm, I, I, I work with unbelievably wonderful families and I get to see, you know, and hear stories, okay? Mm -hmm. Never have I seen, not, not once yet, a, a family that, that buys out of trouble their child every time mm -hmm. that it ever produced <coughs> good fruit long term. Mm -mm. Now, don't get me wrong. There's got to be a situation out there where, where somebody has changed their ways and that worked. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the time, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I like Jordan Peterson. If y'all aren't familiar with Jordan Peterson, he's probably the wisest individual in, in, uh, that is in a public setting today. And he's put himself in the position where he can challenge, and, and he's pretty much bulletproof as much as they come after him. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was, I sent it to the family yesterday, because my kids are the point where they're going to start having kids. And he mm -hmm. said, look, 
He said, you're going to hurt your kids in one of two ways. No matter how good a parent you are, you're still going to hurt your children. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to shape them and prepare them for the world and allow them to experience challenges along, then they're becoming stronger. They're becoming more resilient. But if you focus on protecting them from the world and you never let them experience any challenges, you mm -hmm. know, basically like these safe spaces on a college campus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they can learn to agree to disagree or they can learn to not like somebody but still treat them with kindness, mm -hmm. then, then if you're protecting them so much, then they're going to be hurt by the world and they're probably going to be smacked in the mouth hard enough that they can't get up and recover mm -hmm. because they've never experienced those major challenges. Mm -hmm. And life is tough. I mean, it's, life's tough. It's not a question of if your tragedy comes. It's a matter of when that tragedy okay. comes okay. and how bad that tragedy is. I, I wish I could find something that I was reading yesterday on Facebook about, you know, you may be sitting high and mighty today, but tomorrow... Things are going to change. They're going to change. Yeah. And if you're feeling high and mighty and you're feeling that you can put people down and, and, and do cruel, cold, calculating things, there's a reckoning. There's a reckoning. Right. It will come. And no matter what we've all faced, and, and, and you think, I, I was talking to somebody the other day who, um, she actually lost a child um, at eight years old. That's heartbreaking. And um, then I saw another mom who lost a baby at three months old. And, and I'm thinking, how do you, how do you, how you even the score when they were good parents they were the, you know and then something tragic happens to them something tragic is going to happen to all of us yeah I mean that that's the thing it, it, it happens and there's no rhyme or reason right I mean there's you've been blessed though you think about you have three amazing healthy children they're all very different very different. Very different. Very different. Raised by two parents, no divorce involved. Your children never had to fight and, and watch their parents, you know, split. And then at my dad's this weekend or at mom's this weekend, it's such a screwed up mess for the kids. I think that the downfall of America truly started. I was an eight-year-old kid in a divorced family, and I can remember our economic status. You think about this, how many years ago this was. It changed the day mom and daddy got a divorce. Right. Because once it was mama supporting us, and daddy taking three of the kids, everybody's life changes. What happened to loyalty, devotion, and married forever, and being true, and backing up, having somebody's back. You know what that means? Right. Have somebody's back. If Holly needed you for anything, you would be there. Absolutely. That is the stronghold of a family, is having each other's back. Absolutely, but, but at the same time, it's been by God's grace, right? Because, and, and I hate to say that because, but, but that's the truth. It's the only way to represent that. But at the same time, you know, when, if I was extremely frustrated by God's grace, Holly wasn't that frustrated. Mm -hmm. If she was extremely frustrated by God's grace, I was not extremely frustrated. Mm -hmm. And then when we were both frustrated, the kids I, ran. <laughs> I, I think, I think a lot of it, you know, just experiencing and watching and, and myself going through, I was older when my parents went through a divorce, but mm -hmm. just the pain that that mm -hmm. brought into the family, yeah. right? And how that Because Christmas upends. is different. Marriages are different. Babies' births are different because there's always this one, that one. It, it changes the dynamics. And, and I, I want to honor them. every couple out there today. I've been watching y'all, posting your pictures, been married 60 years, been married one yeah. couple 70 years. That's what America was based on, a commitment to be there and to be, be there yeah. forever. And I love that. Well, and one of the things that, that Jordan Peterson talks about, I remember my Uncle Ben told me, he says, if y'all will keep your eyes on the Lord. Talk about strength, Ben yes. Hiker. Yes. Talk about strength. And he's oh, had, he's had yes. massive amounts of tragedy. Yes. yes, But he says, well, keep your eyes on the Lord. Think of it as a triangle in your marriage. You know, if you're focused on each other, right, you're going to let each other down. Mm -hmm. Because that's what Jordan Peterson talked about. He explains it in such neat ways, and I share it with my kids all the time. If I get a little clip or if I'm listening to something, is we're we are falling, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna mess up. We're we have Nobody's all kinds perfect. we have yeah. all kinds of baggage. You know, we're never the people that we think we are when you go into a marriage. But if you keep your eyes on the Lord, sometimes that gets you through those periods where you don't want to go. You know, you don't want to step out. And in my case, I'm very fortunate because even my staff will tell you, you, you know, if, if if I cross the line, the Lord is very quick to allow life to smack me in the mouth really hard. Mm -hmm. But if you keep your eyes here and you're growing towards the Lord, you're growing closer together. Mm -hmm. 
But, you know, I mean, look, Holly and I fought. I mean, we've had some serious knockdown dragons. I love hits. his story. They started out in a double wide. And, and from that, <clears throat> everybody was like, you live where? Because you started out in a double <laughs> yeah, wide. I yeah. yeah. I was embarrassed because I was knocking on doors in the investment business, talking to people about investing, and, and I didn't want anybody to know. I mean, I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, you get a big money client, and they're like, they're like, where do you live? I'm like, I'm in LJ. You don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. then I had a couple clients that are like, you live in that trailer up there? I'm like, yeah. And yeah. Like, Why? And I'm like, well, because I want to save money. And they're like, yeah. that's smart. I started That's out smart. There. See, right? See, it's so, smart. Yeah. But I remember Katie was talking this weekend. We were sitting around, and the kids are at the age now. They just roast on me all the time, right? In in a good way. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed about some of the ways that I discipline them too when yeah. I look back. But yeah. Katie was like, I, I was sitting listening to you and mom argue one night, and she was like, I was just so scared y'all were going to end up in a divorce. And you, you just think about that, that we didn't, but you think about the yeah. fear and you stress that it. puts on a kid. You got through it, yeah. yeah. You know, but at the same time, you know, that's going to happen. Yeah. And, and luckily, Holly and I never did anything that to, to each other that was enough to where we absolutely could not stay married. Right. And forgiveness is 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 ninety nine point nine percent of how we resolve issues is forgiveness. And um, I have two two sets of friends right now that are going through. Um, one was going through a divorce, and I said, if you can work it out under all conditions, work it out. Yeah. The other one, I said the same exact thing. One had been married 20 years, one had been married 36 years. And I said, it's worth saving. Mm -hmm. It's worth saving. You don't throw in the towel because somebody did something stupid and or, or silly or just, you know, it's just, it's crazy. And it's the little things, you know, you nitpick and you, and it just, get over it. Yeah. Get over it. You know, that's the Bible teaches forgiveness. And forgiveness is for you, not mm -hmm. the, Absolutely. not the, not the other person. Yeah. And the bad yeah. thing about forgiveness is, is if I've had to forgive myself for thoughts I've had. Oh my goodness. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. I have. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, things I've done in the past and I'm just like, God, how do you even tolerate how me, do you right? like me <laughs> so but yeah forgiveness you know and, and that bitterness builds right mm -hmm. so the bitterness builds oh, yeah. to the point that that little things become major things mm -hmm. and, so silly. And, yeah. and you cross that rubicon where you, where at some point that bitterness is so entrenched in your personality that without an intervention by god and him giving you the strength to forgive that relationship will never come back to fruition have you ever met satan no, I hope I never do, but I've, I've been tempted by him way he, too many he times. He is that, he, he attacks the weak link. He controls the weak link. He knows how to sneak in that back door. He knows how to bring in mm -hmm. tragedy and trauma. He is working harder now, and, and when I watch, I, I, I like to watch uh, Greg Gutfeld. He's, he's just crazy, He's and his writers are extremely talented. and. And he always, you know, he has such a diverse bunch of people on his program, but at the same time, they kind of agree with the way we live. And, and I watch, and one of the guys has just gone through a divorce, and they've been giving him a really rough time and just making jokes out of it because he's a comedian. But he said, I'm still a good dad, you yeah. know. And, and you watch in today's America, I think, truth be known, his wife cheated, and I think they've laughed about that a little bit and talked about it. But... But it is, you do the best that you can, and, and you just, you, you owe those kids a commitment. You, yeah. owe, you owe that person that you made those vows to a commitment, and you just have to look at you. And yeah. Satan will attack you. When you get to feeling all froggy and cool that you've got it all, Absolutely. Satan will come after you. Well, I was talking to the kids last weekend. I said, what I've come to the conclusion in my life of walking at this point, because, you know, it takes you a while to observe life enough to understand that, I think a man is tested more in prosperity than he is than he is poverty. Really? Yeah. Because when when you have extreme poverty is a different story, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But when things are going well and and you're rolling in the money and things are coming along right and you mm -hmm. feel like you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof, mm -hmm. that's when your eyes come off the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So I can't remember who it was in the Bible that prayed, you know, let let me let me have enough to where I'm not tempted, but not so much that I'm tempted. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I always tell the kids, I said, you know, just remember when things are the best mm -hmm. is when you don't feel like you need the Lord. And look at what's happened mm -hmm. in the unbelievable amounts of prosperity in our country since World War II. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
are we morally a better place today than what we were before? Mm -hmm. No. And our prosperity has allowed us to think that we are 10 foot tall, we are bulletproof, mm -hmm. nothing can happen to our country, we've got the greatest military ever. Um, but when you really examine what's out there, we're the weakest that we've been as a nation oh. in some time. Oh, and people around the world are laughing at us. Yeah, and I it mean, is very sad. People around the world. We've got to take a commercial break. And when we come back, I, I want to ask you, profitability, do you know, do you have any inkling of how much money was made on what was jammed down America's throat when COVID came in and pharmaceutical companies made billions who who stood to gain the most and we'll talk about that when we come okay. back okay we're yeah. going to take a commercial break we'll be right back and we're going to feature a song by mr ella because he said to tell y'all he is one instrument away from having this thing ready to edit the whole he's redoing three cds and he's doing a brand new one and he's he's been fussing at me because i gave him all the songs to do songs he'd never done before and he's like you made this really hard. And I said, sorry, that's my job. But we're excited about new music coming. And all he has to do now is they're putting the harmonica in. And then he'll have to work about three months on that. So, but we're <laughs> going to get it done. So we're going to take a little break and a little bit of music by Mr. Ella J. And then we'll be back and let's talk about the economy and what is happening. Who profited from the horrible things that happened to America in the last 18 months? Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge.
just called to find one home. I gave my mom a temporary farewell today. I held her hand and watched her fade away. Out among the angels to heaven's peaceful shore to be with our sweet. And live forevermore. Mommy went the way she always wanted to go. From here to there, just a moment's glow. She didn't have to suffer. She just drifted on. Into the arms of Jesus, forevermore to keep. And I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight. They're gathered in joy. Got my little mommy in the band. If there's someone with trouble, sing. You'll help them on the part, just the way she used to me. And if someone needs a friend, just to sit and talk with them, she'll answer every call, even if it's three a.m. Yes, I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight. They're gathered in on heaven's shining shore. I know the angels are filled with delight, and Mom won't be. I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight, 'cause Jesus just called to find one home. Yeah, Jesus sure called to find one Nasdaq's up like 30% for the year. We're back. Okay. Stock market, economy, da 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 da. Do you want me to write a check for 106,000 now? <laughs> Paul just did the math. And okay, the national debt being at 32 trillion. Approximately 32 trillion. I don't know exact, but I know that's approximately where it right. is. Right. So you want me to write a check for 106,000? Yeah, so that You break... want Tim and Bree to write a check for over 300,000 because they have a baby? Yeah. You want Trace to write a check for 106,000? Right. And then we can pay the national debt. And the national debt was acquired because of foolish, foolish spending. Right. Foolish spending, foolish spending. What, how are we going to dig out of this hole? Well, th there's really no way out except for bankruptcy or inflate the debt away. Well, I mean, what, what can we stand? How much more can we stand? When, when, I, when we went on break, I said we would talk about the pharmaceutical companies, and, and I, wish, mm -hmm. I wish I was a pharmaceutical rep. They're making more than the president is now mm -hmm. because 
money and money and money and money and money. I have three friends who in the last very short period of time went to Mexico and going to Peru for major medical care. Oh, I've been having clients and friends doing that for 10 years now. Yeah, it's crazy. But now it makes a lot more sense than what it used to. Sure it does. Sure it does. One of them is going to get a procedure done for $40 yeah. that I paid 4000 for the same procedure here in the United States. $40. Yeah. Now, the, the crisis of COVID not only ended our friends' lives, mm -hmm. it doubled the profits of pharmaceutical companies. It tripled many profits of pharmaceutical companies. It sadly made hospitals money mm -hmm. because the hospitals were jammed with people in there dying. And many of them, my producer from Atlanta, unexplained, he took the COVID shot the next day, his heart quit. Mm. And, but somebody made some money on it. And it seems to be the medical field, but not my personal doctors, but it's the big boys, it's the big the, boys. The big corporations. The big corporations. You know, and the, the interesting thing is, is was it planned or not? I, I, I don't know. but. Certainly taking advantage of the opportunity because the healthcare system was already struggling financially. How much did what's his name Fauci make? I don't know how much Fauci made. They said he is worth so much money and he owned a certain percentage of, of corporations that made lots and lots of right. money. Yeah. Right. So there, follow the money, Paul. Right. Is that the truth? Right. Follow the money. Follow if the money. money's going to somebody who is telling us that, oh, run out and get that shot. Oh, run out and do this. I didn't run out and get it. I'm not going to get it. A lot of my friends did get it, and I'm glad you did, and I'm glad you lived, but I'm not going to get it. Right. It's my choice, but a lot of people aren't given a choice. If you were in a nursing home, you had to be vaccinated. Yeah. Did you force your employees to be vaccinated? Absolutely not. I actually came. So the day that Trump got up and stated that there was a liability shield above all of the companies for developing the vaccine, I walked in and I told my staff, I said, if this means my career, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I said, uh, now, would I have changed if it meant my career? I've got a couple of friends that it was their career mm -hmm. and they did it anyway. But mm -hmm. I said, look, one thing I know about human nature is you remove any consequences to your actions mm -hmm. and you and you hang profitability out there. Mm -hmm. What are they going to go after? Mm -hmm. Right. Profits. So they're going to go after profits and. Um, you know, and if you're in the hall of the elites and they're, they're discussing our population's too large, we're going to have a crisis, you know, I don't want to get into all of that stuff. But the problem is that was when I made the decision not to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then I watched, right. And I was scared of it mm -hmm. because I mean, I, you know, I mean, I'm, my health's not perfect. I know a 60 year old who was just married, who took the shot and then was paralyzed from the waist down. Wow. No other health issues at all. Took the shot, wow. died recently. And um, so many people who risk it because they were scared, they were scared not to. And I said, I think that's where I find fault with everything that was shoved down people's throats. Mm -hmm. Let me make that decision. I made the decision not to get the shot. I'll never get the shot. If I die tomorrow of COVID, I die right. tomorrow of COVID. Okay, I'm an old lady, I'll die of COVID. But instead of melanoma, which would be better, because right. I think it wouldn't be as painful. But anyway. Well, the, I mean, the data shows that, that you're better off to have natural immunity. That exactly. The people, the people exactly. that, that exactly. You know, experienced it and recovered from it. Mm -hmm. But then there's questions about remdesivir and, and the damage it did to kidneys. And, mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, so there, there's all kinds of questions that... that and that's Body what I was, functions are shutting down for many who right. had that shot. And that's what I was wanting to, That's what my son-in-law and I were talking about. He's, he's applying for medical school and... And, you know, I'm like, we, we just need to have a debate. Get all of the experts out there. Get the, get the moderators out of the way. Mm -hmm. Sit around and, and video them mm -hmm. and let them have the conversation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let them have the conversation in front of the entire public, in front of the world now, because we have the technology to do that. Right. And, 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 and see where that decision. conversation goes. You make a decision, but don't shove it down my throat. Right. You know, and, and I can remember here we were, um, you know, um, everybody was cautious and we were cautious. And if I was if I was feeling anything at all, I would stay at home because I didn't want to risk mm -hmm. the guys, you know. And we, we took our own cautionary, precautionary things that we felt were safe. We wiped down. We did this. We did that. But when it came down to it, I just, and, and my sister and I both felt the same way. Her husband, we all felt the same way. We all said, we're just not going to do that because I think that it was all developed I hate to say it, but I believe it's the truth. I believe it was developed very quickly to get out there on the market and look like we had solved a problem that had certainly not been solved. Right. 
And I think that it was all about follow the money. Follow the money. And that's, that's what I saw happening. Because I saw billions of dollars being made. And I think I counted last year I lost 12 friends to COVID. 12 friends, wow. Yeah, 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 wow. of all ages. So it's, it's very strange. But uh, again, just give me my independence. Let me be me, you know, let me right. make my decisions. And, and I decide that I don't want to write you a check for 106000 today. Right. I don't want the national debt to be something that my great-grandchildren can never pay. Do we know what the national debt was before all the foolish borrowing and yeah, spending it, it, and all that? Well, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's moved, it, it, it's moved parabolic, right? So if I look at somebody's debt level from a, from a potential bankruptcy standpoint, mm -hmm. you look at it go parabolic. So mm -hmm. they get to the point where they cannot live within their means anymore, so you have to continue to borrow money. Mm -hmm. And inevitably the banks are going to go, this is too big of a risk, we're going to shut it off. Mm -hmm. So our government unfortunately says, hey, we've got this thing called a printing press. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the world, you know, has to has to tolerate what we're doing, so we'll just print our way out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I can't remember, I, I, I'm trying to picture in my mind, it was like six trillion or seven trillion. Th this data could be absolutely wrong, mm -hmm. but it was substantially less 25 years ago than yeah. what it is today. Yeah. So the problem is, as you go back and you look through history, you know, the, the people who are saying, oh, the debt's not a big deal. World War II, we had this massive amount of debt, but then we spin it down. Mm -hmm. Where we are here, we came through two, year 2000, debt went up. We go through 2008, print money, the debt went up. We go through 14, print money. We go through 19, print money. Then we get into the pandemic and print money. Now the pandemic's behind us, right? Mm -hmm. If the economy is that fantastic, mm -hmm. right, then why does the president need to spend so much money? Why does Congress need to spend so much money? Well, let me remind you again, it's the year before election, and they're trying to make themselves look good, and all they're doing is make themselves look rather foolish. Well, but for that... 106,000 per person, 300 million, is that what you said about the population Well, I think we're like 330 million, Okay. but I just used 32 trillion at 300 million. Have you it's been to South about Georgia lately? You been to um, South Georgia lately? Yes, I have. Do you think that we're overpopulated? No, absolutely not. No, we're not. not overpopulated. And that crap they're trying to shove down our throats, and, and I'm not even going to say his name because he owns a big company, but he thinks that we're overpopulated. We need to reduce the population by 50%. Right. Like basically telling you to stop having children, stop having grandchildren, stop enjoying your life because he's a gazillionaire and he wants you to stop doing that. I've been to South Georgia. There are thousands and thousands of acres. We could house half the world in South Georgia <laughs> on all those pine thickets. You know, I mean, we're not, I don't believe we're overpopulated. And well, the cities probably are, yes. Well, but, well, I mean, the cities, the cities are populated. But, yeah. um, but one thing that was interesting was because I, I don't ever remember in school the talk of global population, you know, imminent I didn't catastrophe. Care. I didn't care, but, I guess. But again, going back to Jordan Peterson, just because he's a he, he's somebody who thinks and goes through the facts and seriously thinks about things, and he's right. Most people don't know how to think, right? Mm -hmm. Like you got to have an argument with yourself in your head to be able to think clearly about a lot. To of things, analyze the right? situation, yeah. And you got to set yeah. your own biases down, yeah, and try to be as just as you can be in that argument, and eat your own pride if you're wrong, right? Mm -hmm. But he mm -hmm. goes back and he says that there have been calls for imminent you know, famine and catastrophe since the 1880s mm -hmm. because the population was getting too large. But the amazing thing, and this is where God's just, if we, if we trust the Lord and we move forward, he says, go populate the earth, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the advances that have come through, okay, the Einsteins, these individuals who have come through who have advanced civilization, we're producing more food per person right now than we have been throughout history, so it's not an issue, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? So, but you also go back and look at the data today, and I've seen the charts, I've looked at the charts. Now, you can lie with statistics, mm -hmm. okay? You can lie with statistics. So I, I've looked at the formulas enough to see what they're talking about, but if you look at excess mortality, Excess mortality, it, you know, kind of moves with the the population. It stays within a certain. So older people are living longer. We're no. This is this is dying, actuarials will calculate. Soon. Like okay. when you go buy life insurance, they right. rate you they based rate on you your based risk. On, okay, she's going to die at forty from stress. So you don't know <laughs> yeah. what you don't know 
is whether one individual is going to die or not, mm -hmm. okay? But you can look at a large number of people and they can calculate the average rate of death. So mm -hmm. that's how they justify, you know, you can buy a million dollars worth of life insurance for 20 years and it costs you $500 a year. The risk of you dying in that period of, of time in mass group Kind of like going to Las Vegas, you're gambling. Right. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. most people don't win in, in, in Vegas, but few people do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so excess mortality is excessive deaths based on that normal trend line. And you mm -hmm. can go back to the 80s. And as the population grows, it does grow a little bit, but it stays relatively similar. Now, war will cause excess death to go mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. uh, pandemic like the Spanish flu in the, in the uh, 1918, mm -hmm. 1919, 1920s, somewhere around there that's going to step up, right? But those are events that settle back down the trend. Mm -hmm. One of the things we've noticed on the other side of, of COVID is excess mortality has upticked, you know, depending upon who, who you're saying, 20% on average. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a substantial number of excess deaths. So mm -hmm. what Of all caused, ages. Of all, of all ages. ages all of ages. all ages. So what caused the excess death? And if you take the countries that had a greater percentage of vaccination, the reality is excess deaths are higher. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, what does that mean? I don't know. Where did it come from? I don't know. I'd love to know, but we've got too many other crises we're dealing with right now we're to where we're not even going to have that national debate. One of the things that my friend brought up when she was here from Germany is the fact that miscarriages, 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 over and over and over. Many women who had been vaccinated and had never had a problem with a pregnancy then had a miscarriage. Hmm. And she said that it that. totally messes up your system and it, it is putting foreign things in there that she, she just didn't believe that all the research had been done, all the, it was shoved down our throats too fast. Right. And, and she said it's a shame because she said that's the way they're trying to cut our population. Now they have vaccinated all these young women who now cannot carry a child to term. And I thought, wow, who would have thought of stuff like this? Who dreams this stuff up to, to, to lower our our population because somebody's sitting somewhere in Kansas or Missouri on a computer and decided this is the way it ought to be. Well, and the hard part is, is for the average person is, is I cannot comprehend someone being that evil, that nefarious, that it's deceitful, real. right? Like it's real. I mean, even even as cynical as I can be, because you know you spend a lifetime in the financial markets and you look at the Bernie Madoffs and you look at the people who steal from nonprofits and just. You the, see the woman the that went to prison nature. this week for twelve years that got was it fifty million from the people? Was was she in Texas? Why no, I, I didn't know. I that. can't remember her name. She <laughs> looked like a model coming off of the runway, and she has two little kids and. She's gone to jail for 12 years for scamming, I think it was $50 million. Off Did of she people. really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll but research it more. We'll, at yeah. some point, when would she quit? Most people would retire about five million. I don't know, I don't know but she, she got Much a bunch. Much less than that, yeah. actually. And, and she's 39 years old, I think. Yeah. She's 37, 39 years old. Yeah, yeah. she's gone to prison. Wow. And, and that's scary because you're talking about people who create wealth for themselves by scamming somebody. Yeah. And it's happening. And it happens. And, it, you know, so, and especially when we worship, we think money is going to be the answer to all our problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's what I tell the kids, you know, <coughs> develop your character, develop your skill set, because I've seen people do everything right and lose everything. Mm -hmm, I've mm -hmm. seen people do everything wrong and accumulate massive amounts, mm -hmm. right? I say it every but day. The, but those yeah. people who make prudent decisions and wise decisions and have the skill set, you know that if you lose everything, you can rebuild it again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You can. I prove that. You, I was going to say. I you prove, prove that. that. I prove that. I got and to thinking about halfway through. This is a living yeah, example. Of this that is right a living there. example. I want to share something with y'all today. We're having a moving sale in Ball Ground at 261 Roy Haynes Drive, and um, our office is downsized. We sold our building. We've got a lot of stuff to sell. A lot of personal stuff. Dawn brought a truckload of stuff. We've got all kinds of things, and and just uh, she's got an eBay store that she's closing out, and we've just got tons and tons of stuff. So again, it's today and tomorrow. And the kicker to this is you get to see baby Zana because Dawn and Zana and Ansley are doing the yard sale while Nanny's working. So. 
Again, 261 Roy Haynes Drive. We've sold some antique quilts. We've sold some cabinets. We've sold some furniture. We've got a lot of stuff left. We would love for you to come by if you're looking for office chairs, if you're looking for file cabinets, because again, our office is downsized a bunch. So check it out, 261 Roy Haynes Drive in Ball Ground, Georgia. And I'd love to see you, and maybe I'll be there later this afternoon. I'm headed to Northside Hospital where I will meet with that team that is going to help my arm to heal. I'm well, excited. Pray, I'm excited. I pray the Lord's blessing and the healing over you. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm, I'm determined, and your prayers have mattered. Today is the first day we're down to a three on pain, which wow. is really cool. Bless really you, cool. Shane. Yeah, really cool. Because it was a 10 for about 14 days, and I was just about crazy. Mm, I bet. <laughs> it was just about, it was Constant to the point I was too. like, it wouldn't stop hurting. And I kept saying, Lord, please remove this pain. Mm. And y'all must have prayed because he didn't just hear me. So thank you so much. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for it's being an inspiration. Our viewers love you, and we always That's get kind. positive messages. They say, we really like Paul Kiker. I feel like I'm negative most of the time. Well, so if you're it's truthful, positive. and I think that's the good thing about you. You're not, not going to you're gonna, you're not gonna paint to a, a sugar-coated something when there's no. No, don't ask my opinion unless you want to know the truth, truth. of what my opinion is. Yeah, the truth, and, and the truth will stand. And again, pick up the phone and call Paul at Kiker Wealth Management. Are you going to begin doing the seminars again that you did for elderly people? I hope so. That's the plan is, you know, I, I put it off just because I was so busy with the will and didn't want to get up the evenings, but yes, so I'm either going to start in the fall. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, one thing I do want to encourage people on, because, you know, depending upon how much time we have here, go to your, you know, the Times Courier is great because they put out all of your, your federal um, politicians. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they're not hearing from you, mm -hmm. they're listening to the few that are screaming like spoiled little brats trying to push their agenda. Right. Okay. Right. So the more conversations I've been talking with people, very few people take the time to write a note. Now, here's what I'd recommend you do. Mm -hmm. Over the past week, I've sent several messages to Ossoff, Warnock, and Clyde. Mm -hmm. So don't berate them. Don't tell them that they're the worst if you disagree with them. That's not the way that we negotiate or get across. What mm -hmm. you do is I put in there, you know, a, a couple of points. Please stand up for fiscal responsibility. You know, don't focus on, on what your personal agenda is on getting reelected. Do what's right for the American people because you've asked to be in this position. Mm -hmm. Please deal responsibly. Now, mm -hmm. two of those mm -hmm. probably just going to uh, put me in the uh, bin over there and say mm -hmm. he's a crazy individual, but I have still taken the time to say something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're listening to in a, uh, 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 with some data that I was listening to today, the conservatives and the middle, the independents, tend to be neutral on all of this data. We're starting to see with Bud Light that, hey, there is a limit to what they're going to take. We're starting to see with Target, there is a limit. There look, is a limit. Because most of the independents and conservatives are like, look, do what you want to do, just leave Don't me out of it. Don't shove it down right? my throat. Yep. So you've got to reach out to your politicians, both on a local level, on a state level, and a national level. And that's how we vote now, okay, because that's what they're paying attention to. So mm -hmm. be kind but share, share what it is you'd like to see them do. And the more of it, you know, if they're getting a thousand responses that, hey, we don't want this national debt increase, we don't want this to take place, mm -hmm. then they know mm -hmm. that we've got a populace that isn't gonna vote me back in next time. Right. So please do that, take right. the time to do it, it's easy. Google, search their name, click contact us, put in your information, shoot it off. There you go. Thank you very much. And I will do that as soon as I get off the air today. I'm going to send it to everybody I know who represents the state of Georgia. It is so very important that we let our voices be heard. Mm -hmm. Let your voices be heard. I'll see you again next week. Say a little prayer. Northside is going to do a great job today, and I'm excited. And I thank you all for being here. We'll see you again soon, only on ETC.